Ukrainian courts held a preliminary hearing in the first war crimes trial arising from the Russian invasion. Soldiers are supposed to protect and serve, but many times even the best are led astray and make terrible decisions that harm other people. Here are some horrific soldiers who got caught for their crimes and put away for a lifetime. Let's dive right in. Number 4. Vadim Shishimarin A Ukrainian court sentenced a Russian soldier to life in prison for taking the life of an unarmed civilian in the first war crimes trial arising from Russia's invasion on February 24, 2022. Vadim Shishimarin is a 21-year-old tank commander that pleaded guilty to taking the life of a 62-year-old man in the northeastern Ukrainian village of Chupakivka. The judge said although Shishimarin cooperated with the investigation and expressed remorse, the court could not accept his claim he did not mean to fatally harm Shelopov when he fired at him, explaining his decision by saying the attack was committed with direct intent. Oleksandr Shelopov, the 62-year-old that passed away, was attacked in the Sumi region during the first days of the invasion. Shishimarin, wearing a gray and blue hoodie, listened to the judge deliver his long verdict with his head bowed from inside the glass box for defendants. He was given a translation of the judge's words from Ukrainian to Russia by a court-appointed translator. Shishimarin was commanding a tank division from the Moscow region that came under attack, leading the Russian soldiers to disperse, and Shishimarin ended up stealing a car with four other soldiers. When they saw Shelopov riding a bicycle and speaking on his mobile phone, one of the other soldiers told Shishimarin to shoot him, for fear he would give away their positions. Shishimarin fired three or four shots at Shelopov from his Kalashnikov. In a video interrogation released by Ukraine's SBU security services, the soldier explained his decision. I was ordered to shoot, so I opened fire on him and he fell. We carried on driving. Shishimarin pleaded guilty to the crime, but his lawyer argued that his client was following an order and did not have intent to take a life. Shishimarin also apologized to the wife of the victim. He was whisked away from the court after the hearing in the back of a police van. Shelopov's widow Katerina identified Shishimarin as the man who shot her husband during a court hearing last week and told the court she hoped he would receive a life sentence. However, she did say, but if he is traded for our defenders of Azovstal, I would not mind. There has been some speculation that once convicted, Shishimarin and others may be used as part of an exchange for Ukrainians held by Russia, including the more than 2,000 defenders of Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol who recently surrendered to the Russians. This was a moment of great significance. Number 3. Jeremy Morlock U.S. soldier Jeremy Morlock was accused of being a part of a rogue squad that led to taking the life of unarmed Afghan men and he was sentenced to 24 years in prison. The specialist Jeremy Morlock, a 22-year-old, pleaded guilty to three counts of fatal attacks and other crimes. He was part of the 5th Striker Brigade based at Joint Base Lewis-McChord in the U.S. state of Washington, which deployed to Afghanistan and saw heavy fighting around Kandahar in 2010. The judge, Lt. Col. Kwasi Hawks, has asked whether the accused were shooting to harm or meant only to scare the Afghan civilians. During the time, Lt. Col. Hawks said he had intended to sentence Morlock to life in prison with the possibility of parole but had been bound by a plea bargain under which Morlock would be sentenced to a maximum of 24 years in prison in return for testifying against his comrades. Morlock pleaded guilty to three counts of fatal harm and one count each of illegal drug use, conspiracy, and obstructing justice. He said explicitly the plan was to take the lives of people. He told Lt. Col. Hawks that he and others had begun plotting the attacks in late 2009 and that they had conspired to plant weapons on the corpses to make the taking of lives appear justified. He said the plot was led by the unit's leader, Staff Sergeant Calvin Gibbs, who was also charged but who has said they were justified. The war crimes case received a burst of global publicity when Der Spiegel, the German news organization, published graphic photos that included a shot of a smiling Morlock posing next to the corpse of one of the Afghan victims. Pulled out one of his grenades, American grenade, you know, popped it, throws the grenade, and then, you know, tells me what it feels like. Dude. What did he mean by that? He meant that he was going to kill people. Enemy or non combatants Yes. The army kept giving him prescription drugs on the battlefield and eventually uh, he was unable to even function on the battlefield. Number 2. Stephen Carrillo A former U.S. Air Force Staff Sergeant and alleged member of the Boogaloo extremist movement was sentenced to 41 years in prison for the fatal shooting of a federal security officer in the San Francisco Bay Area amid large 2020 protests against police brutality. Stephen Carrillo, a 33-year-old man, had pleaded guilty earlier to a federal charge in the taking of life of David Patrick Underwood 
and to the attempted taking away of life of Underwood's colleague after federal prosecutors agreed not to seek the ending penalty. The men were shot while they stood in front of a federal building in Oakland as hundreds marched on the streets. Carrillo admitted to posting messages on Facebook a day before the shooting asking anyone if they were down to boog and saying he was ready to act and not just talk. He also admitted firing 19 rounds from a homemade AR-15 rifle from the back of a white van being driven by a man he connected with online. Back then he also said, I aligned myself with the anti-government movement and wanted to carry out violent acts against federal law enforcement officers in particular. Gonzalez Rogers sentenced Carrillo to the 41-year term, a lifetime of supervised release and an amount of restitution to be determined at a later date. She spoke directly to Underwood's family, explaining why she had accepted the agreement. The judge is quoted as saying, I believe there is evil in this world, but from what I read and studied, as I tried to make and find logic in the illogical, as I have looked for answers, as you are frustrated and angry that such a tragedy could happen, what I can tell you is that I do not see evil in Mr. Carrillo. Prosecutors have said Carrillo of Santa Cruz has ties to the movement, a concept embraced by a loose network of gun enthusiasts and militia-style extremists. Experts say the group started in alt-right culture on the internet with the belief that there is an impending U.S. civil war. Authorities accused Carrillo of fatally shooting Underwood after spraying a guard shack he was in with bullets. Carrillo was arrested a week after the shooting in Oakland, after he allegedly ambushed sheriff's deputies in Santa Cruz County who were responding to a report of a van containing firearms and bomb-making materials. Sergeant Damon Gutzwiller passed away and several other law enforcement officials were wounded. Carrillo has pleaded not guilty in Gutzwiller's passing. Number 1. Calvin Gibbs A U.S. Army soldier accused of exhorting his bored underlings to slaughter Afghan civilians for sport has been convicted of the harming, conspiracy, and all other charges at his court-martial. The crimes were among the most horrendous of the Afghan war, revealing details of post-mortem harm, pictures of soldiers posing with corpses, and the routine smoking of hashish among some striker brigade troops at forward operating base Ramrod in Kandahar province. Staff Sergeant Calvin Gibbs is the highest ranking of five soldiers, charged in taking the lives of the three unarmed men during patrols in Kandahar province earlier. During his eight-day court-martial at Joint Base Lewis-McChord south of Seattle, he acknowledged cutting fingers off the victims' corpses to keep his war trophies, but he insisted that as far as he knew, his acts occurred during legitimate combat. Prosecutors said Gibbs and his co-defendants knew the victims posed no danger, but dropped weapons by their bodies to make them appear to have been combatants. This is the first time these testimonies have been brought to civilian court and out of the military justice system. During sentencing, Gibbs said he regretted collecting human trophies, which included fingers and teeth of slain Afghans but denied involvement in the first and third taking of lives. He maintained that the second act was lawful. Portions of that argument are backed by two fellow soldiers, according to the latest lawsuit. A third man, the whistleblower who brought the crimes to light, testified that he heard conversations between Corporal Jeremy Morlock and others to frame Gibbs so that they could obtain better deals with the prosecution for themselves. Morlock pleaded guilty in exchange for a limitation on his sentence to 22 years confinement. That's all for today's video, folks. See you another time. See you.